Chapter 7 of the battle which the child of the sea had with Galpano and his people. As the child of the sea approached the castle, he met a damsel accompanied by a squire and page. She was a fair damsel, and her hair was beautiful, which she rent as she went along and made great lamentation. When the knight heard how she had suffered from the custom of the castle, he took her bridle and said, Come with me, and I shall avenge you. So they rode on and entered the base court where the knight, where a knight was on horseback who said to him, Come on and receive your dishonor. Tell me, quoth the child, art thou the villain who forced this lady? No, said he, but if I were, what wouldst thou then? Revenge her, said the child of the sea. The knight of the castle then spurred his horse and ran at him full speed, but the child meeting him in full career gave him such a greeting that shield nor breastplate availed, for the lance went through his shoulder and he fell down dead. The child drew out the lance and met the second knight so directly that he rent his helmet from his head and bore him to the ground. He cried for help, whereupon three halberders issued out, to whom, they, whom he said, Kill, the, kill the, this traitor. They all ran violently on the child and slew his horse, but he lightly rose, and first he drove his lance through the knight between the ears and neck, then bestirred himself against the other three, who coming behind had wounded him in the shoulder, so that he lost much blood. Full well he recompensed the villain that did it, for he clove him down to the chest. The others fled, crying aloud for help. The child leapt on the horse of one of the knights and followed, and he saw a knight unarmed at the door who cried out to him, What hath moved thee to come here and kill my people? Sir, quoth the damsel, this is this is the villain? The villain, said the child, that dearly thou shalt pay for thy dishonor, dis disloyal dealing. Go arm thee, else I will slay thee naked as thou art, for to such wretches there should be no mercy shown. But the damsel cried out, Kill him, he that he that he live not to abuse any more, for that will be to your account. Ah, wretch, quoth he, in an evil hour came he hither in thy company, and he went in telling the child to wait for him, for it was no use to fly. Galpano soon came armed into the court, mounted on a lusty white courser, and cried to the child, Well mayest thou repeat this, repent the time that thou ever sawest this damsel, for it will cost thee thy head. Thereat, in anger, he replied, Each must guard his own, and let he who cannot lose it. Without longer stay, they couch their spears, which in their encounter pierced through shield and armor to the flesh, and so forcibly did shields, helmets, and bodies clash together that they both fell. Soon they arose and lay a hand to sword, and threw their shields before them, and began a fierce combat. The splinters of their shields were strewn about, and pieces of their armor and their helmets were battered and broken, and the ground whereupon they fought covered with their blood. Galpano, who felt a sore wound in his head, drew back to wipe away the blood from his eyes. How now, Galpano, quoth the child, dost thou not remember that we fight for our heads? But if thou defendest not thine own, wilt thou lose it? Be patient a while, answered Galpano, and let us breathe a little. We have time enough to make an end. Not so, said the child. I do not combat thee for courtesy. And so fiercely that he, then he smote him, that he bent his knees to the ground, yet quickly he arose and defended himself. But the child pressed him, and he could scarce lift his sword, and now sought only to protect himself with a shield, and the shield was hewn away piecemeal. Then, having no remedy, he fled, and would have got into a tower where his men were, but the child overtook him by the steps, and caught him by the helmet, and smote his head from his shoulders. Then, turning to the damsel, said, Now may ye choose another lover, for this to whom you swore hath discharged ye from your vow. He would have ascended the tower, but the steps were drawn up. Then, mounting the horse of Galpano, which was a goodly one, he said, Let us be gone. I will take the head of this villain, said she and present it to the knight whom I am sent whom I am sent on your behalf. The child answered, Not the head, that will be troublesome. Take the helmet instead. And he asked to whom she was going. To Argays, she said, son of the King of Scotland. Then she by her importunity learnt who had succoured her and went her way. 
the child rode on, but he bled fast along the way, and the white horse was stained with his blood. About an hour of vespers, he saw a castle, castle from whence an unarmed knight came out to meet him and asked him where he took those wounds. In a castle not far behind. And that horse? I took it from him in place of my own, which they slew there. And where is the knight whose it was? He has lost his head, said the child. Then would that knight have kissed his feet, then would the knight have kissed his feet, saying, Ah, sir, you are right welcome, for you have you have for by you have I recovered my honour, for this is the one whom Galpano had conquered. Sir Knight, then said the child, where can I find some better better than on Sir Knight, then said the child, where can I find some remedy for my wounds? In my house, he replied, my niece shall cure you better than any other in this land. So he caused him to be unarmed and laid in a sumptuous bed where his wounds were looked to by the lady, who told him that if he could rest there for a few days, he would be made whole. 